What's the role of the arts in a world that seems to have lost its mind? Can the arts or artists help our society navigate the chaos and turbulence that now seems to be all around us? These are vital questions. Uh, not just for artists and ourselves, but also for our society at large. You know, our society you know, likes the arts. You know, a lot of people, of course, love the arts and view them as being very important. But, you know, at a societal level, the arts really aren't taken all that seriously. Um, they're really considered to be like, like frivolous hobbies, you know, self, something self-indulgent, um, items of luxury and entertainment and not really all that practical and so this is why artists so rarely get a seat at the big boy table when important decisions are being made art just doesn't seem all that practical or even real and yet there's this place inside us especially as artists but art art level lovers everywhere know this and feel this that the arts are so profoundly important but we lack the, the language or sometimes even the concepts to be able to articulate this importance and to be able to justify this importance in the face of our society's um, norms around what is practical, what is important, what is relevant, uh, what can make a, a tangible contribution. My belief is that if we do have those words, if we do have the intellectual and spiritual framework around the arts, um, the, 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 pr the proper framework about what the purpose of the arts is, then we, get, we can truly justify um, what our hearts already know to be true about the arts. And one of these roles, one of these things that is true, is that the arts can help us navigate times of chaos. This has been true throughout all of history. Artists have been the imagination of society or a given form to the imagination of society uh, and have often been at the very vanguard of thought and feeling. And we really need artists to show up in this way now. So my name is Joseph Arnold and I'm a violinist, Alexander Technique teacher and director of the Soul Force Arts Institute. And today we're going to be taking a look at what this role is and what, what the intellectual and spiritual framework is for justifying the role of the arts in a world that's lost its mind. And today I'm going to be reading um, a blog post of mine. And uh, in it, uh, we'll, go, we'll sort of go through this process of what, what is this framework? Um, what is that knowledge that we all carry about the true purpose of the arts and the value of the arts? And what is the role that artists can play in turbulent times? So here we go. To many, it can seem like our world has lost its mind. Our current and past ways of making sense of the world are proving ineffective to meet the increasing pace and complexity of life. Many of us used to make sense of the world and our place within it through the lens of religion, national or ethnic identity, political ideology, or the promise of technological progress. However, more and more of us are waking up to the realization that these lenses are no longer adequate to save us from the ecological destruction, social and financial inequality, um, or the rise of authoritarianism. In fact, these very lenses often seem to be the source of the problems we now face, and which they purport to address. Where else are we to turn for answers? It turns out that the arts have a crucial role, to, uh, uh, can play a crucial role in societal healing and uh, sanity. Although the practical value of the arts uh, is often questioned in a world that seems to be governed by cold, impersonal forces like money, technology, and power. The sensitivity, creativity, and transformative power many artists carry may be the only thing that can reach across divides and inspire humanity to create a more harmonious world. To embody this role, <clears throat> excuse me, to embody this role, we as artists must first undergo a transformation 
and how we make sense of the world, the story we live by. When we create from an outdated story, our creations will only work to further the insanity that story engenders. The answer is to discover a new story, one that allows for greater sanity and healing. When we create from this new story, our creations, however humble, will work to further that new story. The good news is that doing so is the key to both the creation of the greatest, most transformative art, as well as the most empowered role we can inhabit in our quest for societal healing and sanity. Our first step is to better understand the root cause of the chaos in our world. Ask yourself, what is the common thread amongst all of humanity's chronic challenges? What ties together ecological destruction, social and financial inequality, authoritarianism, famine, war, the diseases of modernity, and our broken education system, among countless other issues? It is that the story they inhabit ignores certain truths. If we could see the deeper truth that the earth is our larger body, could we pollute it? If we could see the deeper truth that all humans are our larger family, could we wage war? If we could see the deeper truth that our bodies are sacred, could we treat them so poorly? No. If we saw these deeper truths, we could solve these and other problems almost immediately. Thus, the true definition of insanity, in the words of author Charles Eisenstein, is to ignore anything that's true. When we ignore certain important data points, our actions cannot help but become a force for insanity. It is like an endless game of whack-a-mole in which we are constantly stamping out the symptoms rather than getting to the hidden root cause. The answer is a move towards sanity, which can be defined as the ability to take account of anything that's true, however inconvenient that truth may be. For example, when we address the feeling of isolation that drives our addictions, we no longer need to manage the otherwise unending symptoms of our hangovers and broken relationships. Since what was driving those symptoms was the attempt to escape that underlying feeling. Relief from these symptoms is only made possible by fully facing that feeling. In a sense, all of humanity's current crises are an addiction, and thus can be resolved by discovering whatever truth is now being ignored. In an echo of the Hermetic Principle, as above, so below. The arts world is a microcosm of our society at large. The very same forces of insanity that plague our society find unique form in the lives of artists and within arts institutions. What truths are we ignoring? Many artists have a secret fear that our art doesn't really matter, a fear which hides the truth that the universe is alive, and that the very purpose of the arts is to help us participate in that aliveness. We suffer from repetitive strain and other injuries, which result from ignoring the truth that our bodies are beings to be honored, not machines compelled to do our bidding. We also suffer from self-doubt, creative blocks, and burnout, which are all the result of ignoring the truth that our creative souls are gifts to be celebrated and nurtured, not commodities whose value is to be extracted in service of fame, money, or academic accolades. The examples above are just the tip of the iceberg. The forces of insanity now pervade almost all areas of the arts, from how we practice, create, perform, teach, and make a living. Examine any of your current artistic challenges and you will find at their root some form of insanity. However, not all is lost. If the problems are of society are to be found in the arts, so too are its solutions. What form might these solutions take? 
The solution to each of these artistic challenges above is to be found in taking account of those truths that were previously hidden. For example, artists' common financial difficulties can be resolved by remembering that the arts play a crucial function in society to meet our needs for inspiration, healing, and connection. Because these needs are otherwise being so poorly met, hence the rise of diseases of despair, there actually exists an incredible business opportunity to be found in better meeting such needs. Likewise, performance anxiety and imposter syndrome can be resolved by remembering that your creative soul does not belong to your individual ego and its messages of unworthiness, but to life itself. When you remember that the impulses that guide your creativity are the result of nearly 4 billion years of evolution, you can rest assured that your creations are worthy of love and respect. Similar truths are to be found for all our creative challenges. Here's the amazing thing. When we take account of the important, if hidden, truths underneath our suffering, we gain access to our soul force, the transformative, creative energy that resides in all of us and which characterizes all of the greatest art. It's as though insanity is like a kink in the hose of our creative energy. Release the kink, and our soul force suddenly shines through, allowing for both the creation of the greatest art and for our most powerful societal impact. Here, then, is the crucial role we as artists can play in creating a more sane and harmonious world. When we step into sanity in ourselves, our art becomes suffused with our soul force, and then our art becomes a beacon for the energy and message of sanity healing, and harmony. But is this enough? Can our art really make enough of a difference? With the hour so late and the forces of destruction so great, is it truly possible that our music, theater, or poetry could tip the scales in the right direction? From within our society's current way of thinking, the answer would seem to be no. We believe, at a gut level, that big changes require big efforts and lots of resources. However, it is this very kind of thinking that underlies the problems we face, both in the arts world and at large. It is also deeply disempowering to all who don't currently possess vast money, power, and status. The answer is again to examine what truths might be hidden underneath our current disempowering ways of thinking. In this case, it's that given the inherent interconnectedness of our world, small acts often have outsized results. Following the same line of thinking as the butterfly effect, when we're at the right place at the right time, even the smallest action can have untold consequences. The truth of our interconnectedness reveals art's vast potential for change. After all, art created with soul force acts to illuminate the deeper truths that connects us all, and thereby may be the one thing that can reach beyond our current religious and political divides. The answers to all our challenges, whether artistic or otherwise, are already here. They silently lie in wait underneath the chaos that otherwise dominates our attention. We as artists can return to our rightful role as societal healers and sanity makers by discovering those answers in ourselves and allowing the creative energy thus released to guide our artistic life. Okay, so that's my essay. And you might be wondering what you can do with all of this information. So first, um, just notice how my words have impacted you. What comes up for you? Let's just make some space for that right now. Maybe take a breath. Notice what emotions or thoughts are coming up. And... 
right now, you know, there may not be like a one, two, three um, action plan, you know, like uh, a three step action plan, you know, really the thing to do is just to make space for your heart's knowledge of what you believe to be true about the arts and their place in the world. You know, that, that knowledge can get s stuffed in a box, repressed by all the societal messages that seem to deny that uh, the arts have a place, that your artistic gifts have value. So really the first step is to make space for all of that in your life somehow or another. And you'll know what that is. It's just up to you to, to listen to the messages that come up inside you and to actually follow through on them. So it could be just like taking a walk and thinking about all this. It could be having a journal, you know, making a journal entry about this. It could be talking with a friend about this. It could be approaching your uh, practice time uh, from a slightly different angle. It could be making space for a dream that you've always had. You'll know what it is. And if you want some more support around that, you can go to my website, soulforcearts.com, and pick up your free copy of the Soul Force Arts Starter Kit, which is a mini course that, that will help you get in touch with your soul force and help you make space for that in your life. Uh, there's a 30-minute video lesson and lots of extra bonus content. And I think you'll really like that. So you can, again, find that by going to my website, soulforcearts.com, and signing up for my, my email list. Um, and I also have a book coming out in 2024, Soul Force Arts, The Vital Role of Musicians and Artists in Creating a More Beautiful World. Um, and again, you can sign up for my email list to be among the first to know when that's published. Um, and in the following blog, uh, excuse, not blog posts, well, blog posts and videos, we'll be exploring this theme from lots of different angles. So if this speaks to you, please do subscribe to this channel and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.